the great public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Danker, would you do the roll call, please? Mayor Steen. Present. Councilmember Large Anderson. Present. Councilmember Jordahl. Present. Boughton. Present. Carolyn. Present. Enright. Present. King. Present. Austin. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. We have two back, back up to uh, two, uh, two resolutions, 18 and 8. With those, that material, we need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Just second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number two, our mo we need a motion approving the minutes from November 3rd, 2014. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item number three, are there any citizens that wish to address the council tonight on items that are not on tonight's agenda? Come on, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Um, I'd just like to point out uh, that something that you've heard that uh, there's more homeless. Can I have this on uh, the monitor, please? It's on. We've got it on ours. Yeah, we can see it. I don't know. They can there see it up here. Yeah, you can see it up there on the TV. See it? Yeah, anyway, uh, a lot of you have heard there's more homelessness in America than ever before. And anyway, I just found some information today uh, backing that up. Otherwise, uh, it seems to me uh, a lot of times uh, the city seems to have a war against poor citizens. And uh, in Austin and in America, housing costs have never been so high. And the purchasing power of the wages has never been so low for common citizens. Anyway, uh, it seems like uh, in this town, uh, Hormels and private banks promote poverty upon a lot of the common citizens of this town. And uh, the, the city government seems to criminalize, uh, almost criminalize being poor. Anyway, uh, the city is, uh, seems to be attacking a lot of poor people uh, and ignoring violations by uh, larger interests like, uh, like Hormels and then robberies from private banks. But, but uh, anyway, here's some pictures. Uh, See, uh, um, last month uh, they were discussing this residence as being to be torn, torn down. Otherwise, uh, well, it's, it's abandoned, I guess. Uh, but anyway, can I have this on, on the monitor longer, please? Anyway, this, this uh, house here would be affordable housing for a lot of the homeless people, which uh, there would never been so many in the country before. And then uh, the city did have this house. Can I have this on the monitor, please? The city did have this house torn down and had, had uh, a bluish uh, gray, beautiful siding that uh, would last 50 years. And it was a sound house and the city had it torn down uh, this summer. But this is after they stripped siding off of it. But anyway, it reduces uh, uh, housing for poor people. Uh, here's a house that uh, was flooded out uh, at Sutton Park and got moved to Southeast and now it's abandoned. It's, can I have these pictures on longer, please? They're, they're, they're on there, Matt. They're there. You can see them. Can well, see anyway, this house is now in the southeast part of town. And uh, it's, it used to be called the Gingerbread House over by Sutton Park before they moved it. But now it's uh, got sheriff's papers on it and it's uh, uh, abandoned. But anyway, now getting over to uh, the mayor's neighborhood. Uh, Anyway, can I have this on, on the monitor, please? Yeah. Anyway, here in the mayor's neighborhood, I was talking to people over there. They were getting flooded out by Turtle Creek. And anyway, uh, some of them were concerned that they might only get, uh, quote, uh, $10 for their houses. And uh, anyways, they actually made a joke saying that they wish their house would catch fire so that they could collect a full value of insurance or something. But, that's, uh, that's really stupid. I'll tell you, that it's the dumbest thing you've ever said up here. Because if anybody's house had caught pardon? fire, I said that's the dumbest no. thing I've ever heard you say. Because if anybody's house had caught fire, they think a little differently. Now you've just about hit your time limit, Matt. Well. You've hit your time limit. You're up here putting house after house. I've seen some of these houses; they're good inside, and you're calling them viable housing. And I don't, I, okay, you got another 30 seconds, okay? Because you're just, you're just wearing me out on this stuff. You were all right until you started <laughs> talking about my Okay, well, sometimes you let people speak for 10 minutes. Yeah, because that makes sense. You're not making any well, sense. That's, you're that's, babbling. That's some of your bigotry, I guess. Mm, it is. Anyway, this here is a house oh, in the southeast that did get, can I have this on the monitor, please? 
It's on these We can, we can see, see it up it. here, Matt. Well, can I have it on the monitor? There it is. Well, here's a house that did catch fire years ago, and it burnt a hole th into the living room. Uh, and anyway, they patched it up. And anyway, it's a fine house. But anyway, I was just saying that uh, the city doesn't seem to encourage uh, affordable housing for a lot of people, and there's more people that are homeless than ever before. Um, I guess that's all I'll say. Thank you for that. But that's, I mean, you know, you haven't seen these houses. You have houses up here. You haven't been in them. You could talk to Stephen. I see him nodding his head when you're well, doing they this. Those house, they can't be repaired. They're gutted. There, There's nothing inside. People go by my house and they go, gee, the mayor had a fire. There's nothing wrong. If you look, there's a hole from the basement all the way up through the roof. You know, you got, you got to get inside of them and see. These are, uh, trust me, if there's any way we could salvage these houses, we would. Well, I've done repairs on houses for years. I know, I've seen your house too. <laughs> okay. Any other citizens that want to address the council? Yes, sir. You got, why don't you stand up, come up to the podium, give us your name and your address and your concern. My name is David Hunt. I've lived in the city of Austin. I'm uh, 72 years old, partially disabil disability. And uh, what's your address, sir? 702 36 Drive Southwest Mountain Nelson Trailer Court out there. It used to be Nelson's. Now yep. it's it's uh, the shout, uh, the state the, the out there and stuff. So anyway, I turned around and uh, my neighbor turned around and he was moving his trailer up north and he asked me if I'd be interested in buying his garage and it was a 24 by 28 garage. So I I did some investigating. I talked to him and I asked him about what the, where my uh, lot lines were and stuff like that and they said they didn't know where they were i went up and talked to craig horm up there the building inspector i talked to uh to the other gentleman up there too ron and uh anyway i told showed, showed him this picture here i have here of what i wanted to do with it and he told me i had to stay 10 feet away from the street on this building and i had to go ahead and stay five feet away from any electrical or water supplies out there and uh, so that's what I did. I, t I stayed 12 feet away from the, the, uh, from the street, and I'm also six feet away from any water supply, and I had one garage that was there, and I wanted to move it back, and uh, turned around, and he said there's an electrical box in the back. I'm supposed to stay five feet away from that, which I am now seven feet away from it, and he told me to go ahead, and uh, I showed him this print here and told him what I'd like to do and stuff, and he said, fine and dandy he said uh, I see no reason you can't go ahead and with it and he said go ahead and call him when I was getting the forms the forms were ready to pour the cement for the garages there and stuff like that and uh, so I called uh, my, we bought my boys got the forms all set up and stuff like that and finished on a Saturday I called the office on Monday and told them that that uh, Craig, Craig I was supposed to call Craig and he was supposed to come out and uh, he told me when I talked to him that I was supposed to go ahead and call him up and when we got the form set up and before we poured the cement so he could look to see it was 12 inches on the deep on the side 12 inches in the center and a four inch bottom in the center with the rod two feet apart and everything in it and he said the next time I, I he'd come out is when the building was up and he'd tell me what else I had to do to bring it up to code so I turned around and I called and Monday at about a noon and he wasn't in I left a message there and turned around and and uh, I've got the shell business. I do shell service for Hormel's, and I also do shell service for the Austin Clinic. When they call me and they want me to do a blood run or take a sample of blood to Rochester, St. Paul, Fairmont, or, or Albert Lee, any place I go. And I take Hormel people that are coming in, the salespeople who go overseas. I take them up the cities to the airport, and I bring foreign salespeople from overseas, bring them in down to the Holiday Inn, and they meet at the Hormel's, and I take them back to the cities. I have a shell service I've owned for eight years in the city of Austin here and stuff. and. Uh, when Craig told me everything was all right, he said, then when, when you go ahead and get the cement ready and stuff, you call me and then we'll go on from there. So anyway, I figured that's when I was going to get the building permit on it. So okay. So it turns around and I get everything all set, call up there and everything. And I don't know if he came or not. And by that Saturday, I was going to pour cement. So When was this? When was the Saturday? Because uh, Craig's been gone for quite a while now. Huh? Craig's been 
been gone. He's been yeah, right. There. That was when he was still there. That, okay. When I went to see him the first time, I told him, he asked me when I wanted to start, and I said, well, it probably won't be for a month. He says, well, when you start, you call on me and let me know when you get the form set up and turn around, and we'll get things started. And I said, okay. So then then that's what happened, and then I had a, a mover move my garage over, and it turned around, and I was, work, I was out in the garage one day and turned around, and this young gentleman from the... The, uh, from the building inspector, he, he was a building inspector, which I didn't know. I didn't know Craig retired and yeah. stuff. And he came out there and he came right up to me into my face on my own property. And he says, the first thing he says to me, I'm going to make you tear your garage down. And I says, excuse me? I says, I think you better talk to Craig. I'm dealing with Craig. And he says, well, Craig isn't there no more. He retired and I'm the new building inspector and I'm going to make you tear your garage down. And he says, I'm going to bring my boss out. And on Monday, this was on Friday, about noon, and Monday he was going to bring his boss out, and I says, I got a business. I says, tell me, please, tell me what time you're going to come out, so I'll be here. How long ago was this? Oh, that was, I don't know, three months ago, so it was quite a while ago anyway. Turned around, and so he told me not to do any more building on it, so I did not do any more building on it. Then when Monday came, I was sitting in the chair outside the garage, and turned around, and they didn't come at 9, they didn't come at 9.30, 10 o'clock, he finally came in, driving around the back way, coming in the back way, and I, I, he got out of the truck, and I says, where's your boss? He says, well, he can't make it today. And I thought, well, you know, when that kid come up to me at first, and he says, I'm going to make you tear your building down, I thought, that's not, not a businessman uh, way to do things, you know, run right up to somebody and threaten him right away like that. So anyway, he turned around, and... Uh, and then he said, well, we're, and then I got a letter from the city to come out for a meeting. So that was about a month and a half later. So I was built, and when he come out Monday, we talked, talked, and he said, I says, well, he says, you got a bobcat sitting there. I says, yeah, it belongs to my son. I said, we used it to dig out the dirt and, and pour the sand, sand in there, get the forms ready and everything else for it. And I said, he said, he was nice as heck that day and turned around and he, I says, what do I got to do to bring my garage up to code? And he says, well, you got to put hurricane clips on and halfway from the peak of the rafter down to the end of the rafter, you got to run a one by horizontally across there. So I said, okay, and he never said anything more about not building it. So I figured it was okay to go ahead, so I built it. And I turned around and, and then I get a, a letter from Holly over here with a bit, few different things on here. I, I met with her, her and Ron and stuff and they said, and she personally came out and, and uh, Ron says, oh, how come you're building on this? And I says, well, I wasn't, I said, your boy come out on Friday, he told me not to, so I quit. And when he come out Monday, he never said nothing about not building it and stuff like that, so I thought it was okay to do it. I didn't get into it because I was busy on my business. I run for hormones all over. I've run, been, run down to Missouri and all over for hormones and stuff. Okay. So, so anyway, I turned around and... Uh, I went, went up there and talked to these people here, and they, they come up now and they sent me a letter here that I got to be 20 feet between manufactured homes. I, I, I moved a garage. I didn't move a home, so I don't understand where that is. And then on the paper here, they say that I would, I'm three feet away from a water supply. I'm, all, I'm over six feet away from a water supply, so I don't know where they're getting their measurements here. And then they said, said that I had to have a a permit to move the garage across the street, which I was not informed about any of this stuff. So, and he told me that I turned around and I had to have a license permit to move it, anything over 14 feet. And when I told the young man, I said he was a building inspector then, his name is Derek. And anyway, he turned around and he said, you have to have a, a permit Move it over, don't move it. And I said, if it's over 14 feet, and I said, it's only 13.9, and I says, I got it sitting on a three and a half inch curb, so it's only really 13.5 and a half. Well, anyway, my son happens to know Steve, uh, uh, Steve King here and stuff, and he, and he said to come over and talk to him about it and tell him my situation, and maybe you people could help me out on this deal here. And they said they were going to go ahead and talk to uh, Craig, and they were going to also go ahead. He had to, and they sent this letter to me, and they also sent it to the new owner of the trailer court there, and I have not heard a word from the trailer court at all, and I was just talking to Holly now, and she said they talked to him, and I don't know what's happened on Holly, the deal. can you fill us in on what's going on? Uh, how can we help this gentleman? I've got over $15,000 in the cement and the garage and everything, and... Uh, 
and I just and they, they said if I didn't bring it up to what they recommended here I'd have to dismantle it tear it down let's, let's see where, where we're at when I came on the this issue was ongoing as he described um, I did talk to Mr. Hoyam. Mr. Hoyam did not indicate that he had okayed going ahead without any permits, that permits would have been required. And then at that time, we would have been reviewing what, um, what was required for placement of an additional structure onto that property. He had also indicated to me that although there is not currently a trailer located adjacent to this property, there are hookups for a trailer that are much too close to the current structures, the accessory structures, the garages. So there will be a trailer probably. Sometime. There could be. So another thing that could be done is potentially that those hookups could be moved, you know, into the, the next lot further in so that it would meet the requirements for the setback between trailers but that hasn't been done. The other issue is that, and I'm looking at mostly the zoning issues, there are some building structural issues as well with inspection of the cement pouring and some of the other um, additions because I think there were two garages that were attached to each other or? They were not attached. That's one thing Craig said, you cannot have one building over 38 feet long. He said you can have a foot between the garages and I have eight feet between the garages. Holly, is this something but that we can work with him on? Yes, we can work with him on this. I, you, I asked. We're not going to fix this at the meeting tonight. Why don't you make a, come in and see Holly this week sometime and we'll work it out and I'll make sure Holly reports to me. You can call me if you want, if, you're, you, know, if, if you have issues. Um, you know, just talk to Holly or whatever and you can call me and we'll work this out with you. You may have to get the permits and stuff, but we don't want to see you have to tear I'm more than willing to pay a fine. I'm more than willing to buy the permits and stuff, which I was under the understanding when Craig said to go ahead and do the forms for the cement work that we'd get things started well, then and I figured that was it. Let's see, but you're going to have to okay. work with us on this. Let's well, see. yeah, I, that's why I came here and I was hoping that we could work something it out sounds here. like there's just some miscommunication. Yeah, and, right, correct. You know, a lot of times on permits, I mean, I've built the deck one time was like hey you got to have a permit you know you forget to, i mean the city doesn't tell you ahead of time you're just right. supposed to sometimes right. you're expected to know this stuff and we don't always know that but why don't you contact holly next week and she'll work with you on this and we don't want to have to see you tear this stuff down but there's stuff no. that has to be done apparently and i'm not guaranteeing anything no but let's work with her and see if we can't get this one, one thing ron said to at the at the meeting that between holly and i he said they said well Ron made a mistake, and I thought if Ron made a mistake, it's a fifteen thousand dollar mistake that I got to tear my garage down. No, that we'll, we'll try correct. and work around that. And Holly, I appreciate it. I guarantee you. I appreciate you, that. you trying to get this straightened out for me because I do not want to tear it down. You know what? Everybody likes working with Holly. She's kind of well, new at this, but she's well, really good. good, and she's a well, I, person. I hope Holly and I can work together. Well, I won't have any misunderstandings with Holly. Holly, Holly, will, you'll be happy. I hope. But okay. I mean, you may. We'll see. But keep, <laughs> Holly, keep me appraised of this, and and let us know how this works out and we'll try and work with you so you don't have to tear this stuff down i appreciate it very much thank okay, you you bet thank you mayor and i would say that we have been able to speak together very very well that's not really been an issue um but i would say there's probably some difference in interpretation of obviously well, i what's see been i happening. see the gentleman is frustrated and we all get frustrated once in a while i guess but uh, we'll work with you and we'll, we'll try and work this thank out you okay very much. anybody else wish to address the council yes sir come on up here Give us your name and your address and then tell us. Thank your you, concerns. Your Honor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the city council. Don't be nervous. You're for, you look like you're a little nervous. Well, I'm, I'm not prepared. I just found out there was That's a okay. A just one of your neighbors. Just uh, talk just like you talk to your neighbor. I live at uh, 202 3rd Street in Lyle, but okay. the issue in question is in Austin. On or about October 8th, two pit bulls were taken into the pound. For your pit bulls? No, sir. Okay. But I, I have taken care of these dogs, and I know the dogs. Mm -hmm. And the dogs in question are not, they're not dog fighters, that, or were they trained to be. And supposedly they're going to be classified as dangerous dogs and uh, euthanized. I have no idea what you're talking about. We'd have to, I'm sure you're probably right, but we haven't been brought up to speed on Your the Honor, issue. that isn't the matter that's before the council this evening. It's concerning there's another there's dog. A, there is a dangerous dog. Number seven yeah. on the agenda. No, but it's not that one. Yeah, it's it won't that. be your dog that we're talking about today. Oh, okay. Do you know there's, a, uh, did you come here because there's something on the agenda? Um, Captain McKeegan at the police force, at the police department, I talked to him about it, 
and he told me to uh, come to the Your Honor, meeting. Your Honor, if in fact there's a designation of certain dogs as dangerous, and there is an order out by the animal control officer that it be destroyed, the owner of that dog will have an opportunity to appeal that determination and a hearing will be held for the council in the future. At this time, this is uh, inappropriate because it's not a matter before, it's not, it, it hasn't been appealed, and therefore uh, there's no reason to, to go any further with his comments. He so will have an opportunity at that hearing to testify. Well, what, Mr. what they're saying is you have to go, there'll be procedures, but and you were told to come here, but that was, you shouldn't, I mean, we're not discussing that today, and we will be discussing it. I see uh, Ernesto's yeah. back there. Does he work with this? Can, can you make sure that he's brought up to speed and we contact him whenever the proper procedures take place, Ernie? Okay. See, Your, on, your Honor, the, the owner of the dogs is, is in jail right now. He's in custody, okay. so he's unable to, to be well, here. Will he be out by the time there's a hearing? Or is, he gonna, is this I, a long-term thing? I don't know. Mr. Holverstein, can he speak in lieu of the owner if he's the caretaker for the animals? The appeal has to be made by the owner of the animals. He can do that. Yeah, he, he, though. And your Honor, and if the owner wants to call this gentleman as a witness, he has that opportunity to do so. But he can do that from jail. He just needs to file a proper appeal, and the jail will help him with that. Mm -hmm. Thank we'll you. We'll see to that, Ernesto. Would we see to that that he gets yeah. the help he needs? Okay. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for letting me take your time. You're welcome. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda? Okay, we'll move forward then. Item number, we have no award to recommendation. We need a motion for number five, the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number six, review <coughs> final plot for Cedar Ridge number two. Holly, you're up again. <laughs> yes, there has been some, de there has been a development on that. Um, the uh, individual who had initially petitioned, Mr. Olson, he has decided to um, review the plat and um, develop a few more of the lots. Um, so he would withdraw his application at this time. Okay. And then reapply when he has a new plat developed. Okay. That was the gentleman that was here at the last meeting? Correct. Okay. So we just need, uh, do we need the resolutions then, Mr. Holverstein, or do we just table this or what? It's yeah. not tabled. It will be a new application for a new plat. He's just withdrawn his petition, so no action. action is necessary, Your Honor. Okay, then we'll move on to number seven, a public hearing for a dangerous dog appeal filed by Grace Gadu. Mr. Holverstein. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the Mayor has indicated, uh, the proceedings tonight involve an appeal from a determination by the animal control officer that a certain dog owned by Grace J. Gadu, uh, identified as Mia, is a dangerous animal under the city ordinances and further uh, that the animal control officers entered an order for its destruction. Uh, this arises out of an incident uh, occurring October 13, 2014, wherein a nine-month-old child was bitten by the uh, subject dog. Uh, as far as the procedure goes, uh, for the convenience of the council, I have prepared uh, the uh, applicable sections of the ordinance with regard to dangerous animals. Uh, uh, if the mayor and the council agree, I would uh, suggest that the following procedure be undertaken in this hearing. First of all, the city will call its witnesses and introduce its evidence uh, as any uh, document that's introduced can be examined by the appellant, uh, Grace Cadu. Uh, further, the uh, appellant would have the opportunity to cross-examine any witnesses provided by the city. Likewise, at the conclusion of the city's uh, main presentation, uh, the appellant, Grace Cadu, would have the opportunity to testify herself and present any other witnesses or evidence she so desires to be heard and presented and reviewed by the City Council. At the conclusion of the hearing, the City Council will have one of three choices to make. Number one, find that the dog Mia is a dangerous animal and that the dog should be destroyed. 
Or number two, find that the dog Mia is a dangerous animal, but the dog should not be destroyed upon the condition that the owner meet all of the or, all or some of the requirements of subdivision 21A of the ordinance. Uh, I think you're familiar with that. That requires certain types of uh, restraint and so forth, chips uh, and insurance. Or number three, find that the dog Mia is not a dangerous animal. Uh, if that uh, procedure is uh, okay with the city council, I'm ready to proceed. Council, any problems? Go ahead and proceed. Okay. Uh, I would call uh, Community Service Officer Ernesto Canto, and we, could he come up to the podium? So uh, I'm showing you the police report that was developed with regard uh, to this incident that occurred October 13, 2014, involving the dog uh, Mia, uh, owned by uh, the appellant Grace Gadu. Is that a correct copy of that police report? Yes. Okay. Uh, council and the uh, mayor, we would ask that this police report be made part of the record in this matter. And we'd also provide the council with a copy of the same. Uh, Officer Cantu, uh, what's your employment with the city of Austin? I work as a community service officer for the uh, Austin Police Department. And as part of those duties, are you uh, uh, re assigned certain animal control uh, duties with the city? Correct. Okay. On October 13, 2014, uh, were you contacted and, and uh, asked to uh, go to the uh, Austin Albert Lee Mayo Clinic uh, Hospital facility here in Austin, Minnesota? Correct. And who uh, contacted uh, the police department? I believe that it was the hospital who called the, the, the Austin Police Department. And that was on the basis that a child presented, uh, the parent presented a child uh, with certain injuries uh, resulting from a dog bite? Yes. Okay. Uh, upon uh, reaching the hospital, uh, did you talk with the owner of the dog? Yes. And did she identify the little child with the dog bites as her daughter? Yes. And that daughter's name is Camila Rose Birdsong? Yes. With a date of birth of January 17, 2014, making her approximately nine months old at the time of the attack? Yes. Did uh, Ms. Gadu tell you what had happened with regard to the attack of the dog upon her uh, daughter? Yes, she did. But and she wasn't present when it happened, when they said it happened. Well, what did she say? How did she learn that her, do her daughter had been attacked by the dog? She, uh, I was, she, she told me that she heard like, she heard over here like a, a weird bark. So she went to check on the kitchen and she noticed uh, her little girl bleeding from the face. Okay, she was in another room uh, when Cor she heard the noise? Correct. And the child was located in the kitchen? Correct. What did she tell you she observed when she got into the kitchen? She saw the, the baby with blood on, the, on, the, on her face and took her to the emergency room. Okay, and where was the dog? Did she indicate? Uh, she indicated it was also in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, she indicated that she heard a weird noise. Did she hear any barking? Did she indicate to you? Uh, it was barking. That's, that's what she heard, a weird, a weird barking. Did she indicate to you that she'd heard the baby crying? Yes. Uh, and at the time that she entered the kitchen, the baby was on the floor with the blood on her face? Uh, correct. And she indicated then that she proceeded to take the child to the hospital for medical attention? Correct. Uh, the first time you uh, uh, talked to uh, uh, the owner of the dog, Ms. Gadu, you had not uh, been in the house, is that correct? Correct. Okay. 
And the next time you visited with Ms. Uh, 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 Gadu was when you served upon uh, her the notice uh, of a dangerous dog or determining your, your determination that the dog was a dangerous animal under our ordinances in that the animal has caused bodily injury or disfigurement to a person on public or private property and that the animal engaged in an attack upon a person under circumstances which indicate danger to personal safety. And further, you indicated on that notice that it was your determination that the animal should be, animal should be destroyed. Is that correct? Correct. And you served that notice upon Ms. Gadu on October 13, uh, 2014, and she did acknowledge receipt of that notice at that time. Correct. Did you have any further conversation with her uh, when you served this notice upon her? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Did you inspect the house at all or go or? No. Okay. Officer Cantu, is this the, a copy of the notice that was served upon uh, Ms. Gadu? Yes. Okay. Uh, Council, Your Honor, we'd like to make this part of the record in this proceeding. Now, while at the hospital, did you have an opportunity to see uh, little Camila? Yes. And did you take pictures of her when I you were took, there? I took one picture. One picture, okay. And that was uh, through your phone? Correct. And you had those pictures uh, developed through the computer system so that prints could be made of those pictures? I sent it to the to, the, to Captain McKeegan and then he, that's what he did. Okay, yeah. so he used the technology available to the police department to actually develop uh, pictures or photographs of the child? Yes. And are the, the one, these are the same pictures, one is just enlarged a yes. little bit? Yes, yeah. Okay. And what do they show on the child? They saw a uh, bite marks on her face, and there is a bruise around her nose. Okay. So you feel that these uh, pictures are accurate in that they depict uh, four marks, at least a minimum of four marks or puncture wounds on the child's face? Correct. And uh, while the picture not, may not be that clear, it all, you recall that she had bruising on her face as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor Steam and members of the council, we would like you, we were going to uh, have those entered as evidence in this proceeding and would like you to uh, review those pictures. Did, did Ms. Gadu uh, indicate what treatment the child received at the hospital or were you ever advised of that? Uh, no, I left the hospital. Okay. I was not told what happened after that. been remiss in identifying Ms. Gadu. Is she present today? She right there? Baby. Okay. You will have an opportunity to, to look at these pictures if you so desire. Okay. Again, I would ask that these pictures be made as part of the record of these proceedings. Uh, officer, in your professional opinion, taking into consideration your training and experience as an animal control officer, <coughs> Do you believe this dog to be dangerous by reason of the fact that it attacked a nine-month-old baby? Yes. And uh, after observing the wounds inflicted by the dog upon this baby, do you feel that it would be appropriate that this uh, dog would be destroyed in order to protect any other children or, or persons that may come in contact with uh, this dog? Yes. Okay. 
I have no further questions unless the council has any questions of uh, Officer Cantu. I guess I, is this the f only report? Is it, were there previous reports of, on this concerning the start, or was this the first? I don't one? believe so. Okay. It, it, no. <coughs> it appears to me that the dog uh, could have been approached by the child, and the child attacked the dog. You, you never know. Yeah, but that that we don't know because the, they were in the kitchen, and the mom didn't saw what happened. Didn't see what happened. So Grace owned the dog, right? And yes. The, yes. The dog bit the child. Was the child Grace's child? Yes, it's Grace's daughter. What was the dog's disposition when you were there? Was it aggressive or was it? No, no. When they when she brought to the when she brought to the to the to the pound, it was it was just timid. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what are the wishes of the family? The well, we'll, we'll we're going to have, have a, yeah, they'll have an opportunity. Uh, first of all. Ms. Gadu, do you have any questions of Officer Cantu at this time? Okay. okay. Yeah, just yeah, just fine. No. Well, no. we want to be fair. The dog's been in the pound. Have you observed any aggressive? He's still. Uh, she's timid, though. She's, you know. Yeah, she's very shy. Well, okay. okay now, well, just a minute. Just a minute, please. We're going to call witnesses. I mean, anybody wants to speak will have that opportunity. I, I, again, I'm trying to be fair here. I'm saying that as the dog's been in the dog pound, has the dog exhibited any aggressive behavior against its caretakers? It's just, just timid. But she's I what? don't timid, you know, like she's timid. scared. Yeah. Timid. Okay, but she hasn't barked or jumped or lunged mm, or yeah. done anything like that. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> These are the pictures. Okay, have you seen those there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, subsequently, uh, Ms. Gadu did file an appeal, and it's uh, memorialized by a letter uh, addressed to whom it may concern, indicating her appeal and her thoughts with regard uh, to this matter. Uh, it's pursuant to a letter dated October 16, 2014. Uh, we'll make that part of the record. Uh, Your Honor and members of the Council, uh, uh, that is at, at this time the end of the uh, evidence we'd produce at this hearing and I would suggest that now at this time Ms. Gadu have the opportunity to address the Council or present any evidence she wants or any witnesses she so desires. Thank you Ernesto. Yeah. And if Ms. Gadu, you want to step up to the podium? Hi. Hi. And you're, you're great? You're yes, I'm Grace Gadu. And your address? Um, 305 27th Street, Southwest. Here okay, and you're the owner of the dog? Yes. Okay, how long have you had this dog? Um, a little over a year. Okay. I've known her basically her whole life. She's three now. Um, I have her previous owner here, actually, and her okay. support team. <laughs> is, she, is she neutered? Cause some, is she spayed or neutered, whatever? Yeah, she's fixed. She's, she's okay. fixed, and she's... She's a good dog. Um, so why don't you tell us your, your version? Or, that you know. day, the day that the incident happened or whatever, I had just left the hospital with her because she, she had a cold or whatever, so we were there. and um, Your daughter? Had, yep. Okay. So we had just gotten home, and I was just getting everything situated, and my dog was hungry, and I was taking stuff out of the fridge, and there was a pan of, like, soup that I had made the night before, so I just gave it to the dog, not thinking that the baby would interfere with her or anything because... Like when we give Mia food, we can take it from her and she's never nipped or bit at any of us or anything. But I guess just this particular time, the baby must have got too close to her and she reacted. And I think that that's my fault for giving her human food. I don't know, but I think that's what caused this whole thing. I'm not sure. Um, and then she bit at the baby. The baby was fine. We took her to the hospital. She didn't need stitches or anything. They said all the wounds were superficial, some ointment on them. And then like a week and a half later, they were pretty much healed. So, so you originally you said that you didn't want the dog. Now you've changed your mind, obviously. I have somebody. I mean, 
I don't know if I'm allowed to have her back. If I could have her back, I'd love to take her back. I don't know if I could. That's be what we're determining here tonight. If I'd be completely comfortable sitting with it, but I do have somebody who is more than willing to take her. They live in the country. They don't have any smaller children, so. Okay, now have you reviewed, like if we declared this a dangerous dog, but put conditions on it for insurance and stuff? Yeah, we'd have to get insurance and put a chip in her and stuff, and we know we already know about all the conditions, all the stuff. And, and they'd be willing her. to get that insurance because that's rather expensive. We work together and make sure that it happens. She's a good dog. I don't feel that she deserves to die for what she did. I think that if she was trying to hurt my child, my child would have at least had to have had stitches. So I believe that if she was trying to hurt her, my daughter would have, she'd be worse off than what she was. Well, I think, you know, the council takes very seriously. I mean, a lot of us are dog lovers. I have dogs. You know, right. we don't, we, we really don't like to put a dog down unless. And I, I just don't think, like, if she, if my daughter would have had to have stitches or something, that might have changed the whole situation. But because of the wounds being so superficial, you know, and they didn't really need any kind of medical attention and it hasn't affected how my daughter is and. You heard Ernesto say that she's not really that aggressive from what he's experienced from her, so I just don't feel like I believe Who's she deserves a second Who are the day? people that are, that are talking about taking the dog? Could you come up here and tell us, you know, what kind of conditions you live at and where you'd have the Your dog? Your Honor, before, let's take one thing at a time. Okay. Could I, with, no, go ahead. with, with, your, with your permission, I would like to, are you done with your testimony or? Yeah, I really don't. Okay. Uh, it's true to say, though, that your conversation with Ernesto was accurate in that you were not present in the kitchen when the dog bit your daughter. Is that correct? That is correct, and I feel... And so any, any comments about or suppositions on your behalf that the dog bit your daughter because she got too close to the dog's food is just pure speculation on your part. Isn't that correct? I mean, I guess because I gave her the food when I left so you're the area. But you're guessing because, on that. Yes. You don't know that to be the case. No, because I didn't see it happen. Okay, that's... Okay. So, so you've never seen this kind of behavior before? No. And, and you've had the dog a year, you said? Yeah, and then... This is the person who's had her for the other two years of her life and hasn't seen anything like that from her. Who either. had her before? Yeah, I had her around other animals, bunnies, little kids used to ride on her like a horse play. I have pictures in my phone I can show you with her, with kid, little kids. Okay. Council, you have any questions? I have a couple more questions, Your Honor. It's accurate to say when you talked to Officer Cantu when he served you the, the documents that you said that you did not want to have the dog back in your house. No, because it was right after it happened and I was still... But that's what you said, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you still have a fear that this dog could do harm to your child because you're willing to take this dog and you're at least requesting that you have the ability and the opportunity to give the dog to someone else. Not a fear. If I can have her back, I will. I'll take her back. But if I can't have her back, I'd rather her go with somebody else than her be put down. So, so like, if I can have her, I'll take her. You would have you would have no fear that this dog could bite your little girl again. No. Okay. Council, what kind of conditions can we put on this, Mr. Hover? <coughs> okay, if the council would turn to page, uh, I believe it's twenty nine of the. Uh, Packet that and what I gave would you recommend, I guess, if we weren't to put the dog down? Well, it's my recommendation that the dog be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, you have asked and inquired, and the, one of the choices of the council is that under subdivision 21 of section 10.10 .10 of the Austin City Code, it says, if the city council does not order the destruction of an animal that has been declared dangerous, the council may, as an alternative, order any or all of the following. One, that the owner provide and maintain a proper enclosure for the dangerous animal, as specified in subdivision 20 above. Two, post the front and rear of the premises with clearly visible warning signs, including a warning symbol to inform children that there's a dangerous animal on the property, as specified in Minnesota Statute 347.51. Three, provide and show proof annually of public liability insurance in the minimum amount of $300,000. Four, if the animal is a dog and is outside the, the proper enclosure, the dog must be muzzled and restrained by a substantial chain or leash, not to exceed six feet in length and under the physical restraint of a person 16 years of age or older. The muzzle must be of a design as to prevent the dog from biting any person or animal, 
but will not cause injury to the dog or interfere with its visit or re respiration. In other words, the dog has to be in an enclosure, and if the dog is out of the enclosure, it must be muzzled and leashed. What guarantees do we have if this dog goes to a person that lives outside the city? Can we enforce this? Well, the animal control officer shall immediately seize any dangerous animal if the owner does not meet each of the uh, requirements. So uh, that is problematic, but I believe that there would be jurisdiction okay. for the city to enforce this order. Okay. Uh, going on, Your Honor, it has to be a, the animal must, if the dog must have an easily identifiable standardized tag identifying the dog as dangerous affixed to its collar. Uh, number six, the animal deemed dangerous by the animal control officer shall be registered with the county in which the city is located within 14 days after the date the animal is so deemed. So that would take the case if the dog is still within the county. Uh, and if the animal is a dog, the dog must be licensed and up-to-date on rabies vaccinations. So those are the requirements, as I said, some or all of them can be designated by the city council in the event they find this dog to be a dangerous animal in lieu of destruction. Okay, council. I'm, I'm suggesting that maybe uh, subdivision 21 Item two, three, four, five, six, and seven would be a reasonable solution to this uh, this concern. Two, three, four, six, and seven. We would not have the owner provide and maintain a proper enclosure for the dangerous animal as specified in, in subdivision 20. That would not be included. Or she could give the dog to the individual who lives outside the city. But then the individual will be required to fulfill these requirements, isn't that so, Mr. Hoverston? Yes, because you recall, if the dog is, is found to be a dangerous animal under our ordinance by reason of what transpired with the biting of the child, then whether it's in the city or outside of the city, the owner will have to cause, or the new owner will have to cause this animal to uh, meet the requirements as set forth in our ordinance. Who's the person that's talking about? You want to come up here, Matt? Th give us your name and where you live. My name is Kelly Janning. I live uh, at 53809, 184th Street. Where is that at? It's out towards um, Ulan's Quarry or out on 4th Street Southeast, straight out of town. Okay. Um, it's on a farm. I have cows. I have one other dog. He is uh, a terrier. Um, but he's probably about knee high. He gets along with dogs really well from what I've been told by the previous owner. Um, so does she. Do you have kids? I have two children, but they are 13 and 14, so they're not young. Um, I believe that this dog would be fine at my house. Um, my house is a, a three-bedroom house. She would be pretty much a house dog. She wouldn't be outside much. Um, they would be on leashes. My dogs are always on leashes. You're familiar I, with the dog? Um, not really, no. Um, but I'm willing to take her. Okay. Um, I was looking for another dog anyway because of some um, fears I have of someone that was just released from jail. I don't know if you've seen the article or seen me on TV, but anyways, I, um, I just think that even a, another dog would be good for me right and now. And you're willing so. to fulfill the requirements that, yep, this, that, I am. that the Yep, I think that the other two people here, um, the previous owner and the owner now would help me fulfill those requirements um, with anything that needs to be done. My dog is all up to date on shots. I would make sure this one would be. Um, keeping insurance on or what kind of insurance, whatever you need. Um, insurance can be expensive, $300,000. Yeah, I know. But You've checked on it already? I haven't checked too much on it, no, but um, is this like pit bull insurance or is this like well, just there's regular? No specific dog it's insurance. Liability. It's liability insurance. It's what? Liability insurance. Like homeowner's insurance? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be liability insurance through your homeowner's insurance. Okay, well, my parents own the farm, I mean, so, and they're willing to let me have this dog, and, I mean, they're Fred and Deloitte Schmidt. But they're going to have to have that insurance for you to come up. You're going to have to have it to show proof of that insurance to pick yes, it up. Yes, I understand that. But, I mean, they own the farm, and, you know, they understand that I want this dog. They're, they're comfortable with it. They know I'm here tonight. They know the whole circumstances around what's going on. So I've not lied to them about anything or told them anything. That's not true. So, um, 
and if they feel it's okay then I guess they don't feel that this dog is dangerous so um, well, they're I'm, pretty I'm good about that I really really don't like going against Ernesto's recommendations but I've seen but I mean, even with their, startled you know and I've but seen even with Ernesto saying that the dog was timid when he mm -hmm. took her and that she's been timid the whole time that he's he's been around her and in the pound I don't know if a dangerous dog would act that way I know dangerous dogs um, I've seen them yeah, and they don't act like I'm that. not an expert on dangerous yeah. dogs, and I've been around in my whole life and you know obviously yeah. we don't want to put it back in a situation where a young yeah. girl could be I don't have injured. any small children well let's see what happens Roger but you have a motion yeah I'll, Tom, I'll make a motion well you did already or you can't go ahead and restate your motion that it's declared a potentially dangerous dog because we don't know if it's declared a danger but we declared a potentially dangerous dog and that we adhere to the rules to okay. item two three four five, six, and seven under subdivision 21. Can we even declare it potentially or? Oh yeah. Can well, I live on a dead end road. I'm the only house on the end of my road. So I mean, I'm pretty secluded where I'm at. Potentially is like so. halfway, you know, it's not, you know, okay. two potentially is equal a dangerous job. Is that right, Chief? Or a dog, isn't that right, Brian? If it gets the same, th another report, no matter what it is. David. Uh, David. Or David? Because if we do potentially, then I don't think any of those things will be. A dangerous dog, there are no further requirements. It just means it's got a, f a first free bite. Yeah. And that if it bites someone else or engages in the conduct uh, again, then it that's prima facie evidence that it's a dangerous animal. I think that's good. I pretty. don't feel, and I'm representing the city here, I know. that this fits within the definition of a potentially dangerous dog. This dog has attacked a nine month old child who's crawling on the floor. Mm. If, this, if this dog had attacked a little child, a neighbor child, what would, the, what would the attitude of the council be at that point in time? What if this dog was out for a walk and attacked a little toddler in someone's front yard? We have declared dogs to be dangerous that have bitten and killed other dogs. The fact that this dog did not uh, cause such injury to create permanent disfigurement is a matter of coincidence and circumstance. The dog, in fact, attacked a nine month old child. So I don't think the designation of the dog as potentially dangerous is merited by the facts or the evidence. Okay. I would agree with that. Um, I'm leaning towards destruction of the animal. Um, it, I don't take that very lightly. I own two dogs, and I. But if either of them harmed my child, I would put my dog down. I there's just no. I just can't. I wouldn't. I couldn't live with that. The possibility that it could have done more, or that it could do something again. I can't. And I don't want. I see the pictures of that little girl, and if that was my little boy, or. A friend or family I could not live with myself if I allowed that dog to continue living with the potential to possibly do that to somebody else and I'm just trying to explore the possibilities I mean I'm you know whatever council decides is, is fine okay we have a motion Tom can you read that motion back Motion by Councilmember Boughton to label the dog as a potentially dangerous dog. And with Hoverston's discussion, items two through seven are not needed because a potentially dangerous dog does not have those requirements. So, in essence, Councilmember Boughton's motion is to just declare the dog a potentially dangerous dog. Is that correct? Well, let me rephrase that then yeah. and put it a dangerous dog and with items two, three, four, five, and six. I think, yeah. Motion by Councilmember Dog to classify the dog as a dangerous dog with requirements of two, three, four, five, six, six and seven, seven as a requirement to get the animal back. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Nay. Tom? Motion by Councilmember Boughton, seconded by Councilmember Enright to declare the dog a dangerous dog and requirements of two, three, four, five, six, and seven be uh, needed in order to get the dog back. So an aye vote is in favor of such. Councilmember Jordahl? Nay. Boughton? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Enright? Aye. King? Nay. Austin? Aye. Councilmember at Large Anderson? Aye. Motion passes 5-2, Your Honor. 
okay, you get your dog, or you're gonna have to fulfill those requirements with Ernesto, and I think you should consider yourself fortunate because this doesn't happen very often. We really take it serious when the police department makes these recommendations. Your Honor, procedurally, I, I, we should uh, then have a motion made to have the city direct the city attorney to prepare findings of fact and an order. First of all, the findings of fact de declaring the dog to be a, uh, a dangerous dog, outlining the reasons why. And number two, that the order be given that they comply with these uh, uh, conditions. And so at the next council meeting, as we've done before, I will, will have prepared those and the council then can vote on that resolution and, s and the mayor uh, can and the recorder can sign the order. Do we have a motion? So moved. So, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next order of business. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Sure don't want to see that dog back in here. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Where are we at? What item? Number eight, public hearing for the review of the downtown master plan. The downtown master plan was developed over a five month period and included a June 23rd kickoff meeting with community leaders and volunteers, a July 14th tour of the downtown Austin um, with residents, business owners, and organizations. They called this their reconnaissance visit. On August 27th, there was a presentation of the straw man plan to downtown merchants, stakeholders, and the community in general. On October 8th, there was a draft plan presented to the public and on October 20th, the plan was, the current plan was presented to city council at a work session. The um, plan was uh, developed to provide a framework for decision making for the long-term desired outcomes in downtown Austin. And the plan provided uh, seven guiding principles, uh, identification of downtown influence areas, uh, the greater downtown identifying five policy areas, explored the transportation in downtown in detail, um, looked at the downtown core area and key activity corridors, including Main Street and Fourth Avenue. It then um, went on to detail some strategies for implementing the downtown plan, which include uh, establishing a group to oversee broad impl implementation of the plan, Revise and development, uh, revise development regulations, continue financial assistance programs, create specific redevelopment plans, incorporate transportation and in infrastructure improvements into the capital improvement plan, create green infrastructure standards for the greater downtown and downtown core area, um, consider the development of a heritage Pres preservation commission and consider sustainable building design and in public infrastructure standards. And then these, uh, there were specific areas of interest that were identif identified often at the community meetings that are addressed in the plan and those were the downtown parking and need for possible need for a ramp, the pedestrian facilities and alternate modes of transportation, specifically bicycles, um, the downtown organizational strategy which would be the developing a group to kind of foster the develop or the implementation of the plan. Um, redesign and redefine of the use of the 4th Avenue Northeast Corridor and urban forestry and green infrastructure and sustainability. The final plan is available on the Austin City website. It's approximately, it's over 80 pages. It's a very detailed plan. Um, it was developed um, through the input of a number of people. There is an acknowledgement page that acknowledges um, the mayor, the city council, the planning commission, uh, many of the organizations in the city of Austin, including Vision 2020, the Development Corporation of Austin, the Main Street Project, Chamber of Commerce, Port Authority, and others, as well as city staff. The consultant team was CR Planning along with SEH Incorporated. They um, gave a special thanks to the downtown businesses that offered suggestions and participated in the public meetings. Uh, the Vision 2020 committee volunteers who reviewed drafts and provided background inf information and then of course the residents of the city of Austin par participated in the public meetings and hearings. And then on um, in adopting the downtown master plan we had a planning commission meeting on November 13, 2014 at which time a motion was passed 
five to zero recommending approval of the downtown master plan to the council which is why we are here tonight um, the downtown master plan is here for the review and um, adoption of the amendment to the comprehensive plan council this is a public hearing so if anybody in the audience wishes to address this issue this would be the time public hearing okay nobody then we need a motion or a resolution on this so move the resolution second mr dankert councilmember jordahl aye bowton aye carolyn aye enright aye king aye austin aye councilmember large anderson aye Resolution passes 7-0, Your Honor. Thank you. We now move to petitions and requests. Number nine is a motion setting a public hearing for December 15, 2014 on the adoption of the five-year capital improvement plan. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number 10 is a resolution granting 2015 off-sale liquor licenses, club on-sale licenses, and wine on-sale licenses. So moved the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Uh, oh, Mr. Nanker. Council Member Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 11 is a resolution accepting results of the 2014 general election. Uh, anybody want to recount on Judy's <laughs> race? <or anything>? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Nanker. Councilmember Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 12 is a resolution granting a 3 2 beer on sale liquor license to Maya Restaurant LLC. Anybody? So moved. Need a resolution? Is there a second? second? Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Councilmember at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 13 is a resolution approving grant agreement number 4 to the North Main Street Flood, flood, excuse me, flood Project. Mr. Lang. Uh, Mr. Dinkert and myself have been working with our representative from the DNR on this uh, grant agreement. Um, this would be an extension to our current North Main grant agreement and they would also uh, provide some additional funding for projects going on along the North Main uh, flood control project in the amount of an additional $700,000. This is a 50-50 matching grant and it would go toward uh, projects that we are planning um, finish up of the construction on phase phases three through seven. It would go toward design services for phase one and design services for Lions Park, a combination of those things. Um, our current agreement expires on December 31st of 2014, and this would be a one-year extension to that, and we would recommend um, awarding the grant amendment. Council, anything? If there is not, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 14 is a resolution approving grant agreement number one to the Dobbins Creek Flood Project. Mr. Lane? We previously received a $450,000 grant for work along Dobbins Creek. It included some property acquisitions and also some infrastructure projects. Um, we're currently in the process of working on those, uh, making some offers. We have had some people turn us down, but we are continuing to, to work on our list of acquisition along with those infrastructure projects. And uh, the current grant expires again on December 31st of 2014. And this one would just be a one-year extension to that grant. There's no additional monies, uh, just a one-year extension. We'd recommend approving this. Council, we need a resolution. So, second. second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 15 is a resolution approving grant agreement number two to Turtle Creek Flood Project. Mr. Lane. We currently have a $1,861,700 grant for, it's a 50 50 matching grant for work along Turtle Creek. Again, it identifies acquisition and infrastructure projects that we're currently working on. And this uh, request 
requested amendment here today is to extend it to uh, extend our current grant which expires on December 31st of 2014 two years so this would be a two-year extension for this grant and we would recommend approval anything council if not let's have a resolution so move the resolution is there a second, second. mr. Dankert councilmember Jordahl aye Bowton aye Carolyn aye Enright aye King aye Austin aye councilmember large Anderson aye resolution passes 7-0 your honor Thank you. Resolution 16 is approval, approving the purchase of 109 16th Avenue Southwest. Mr. Lang? At a previous work session back in September, we discussed the possibility of acquiring a home or multiple homes if they become available along 16th Avenue Southwest for future planning for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, in going through that process, we have um, a willing seller. We have appraised the home at $23,900, and we would recommend a purchase of that home actually for $23,650. That is less the $250 appraisal, which the city has already paid. Um, funds for this would come out of our wastewater treatment plant domestic budget. Uh, there would be additional funds required for abatement and demolition of the home, but we would uh, recommend approval of a, for acquiring the home at 109 16th Avenue Southwest. So Council? moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carroll. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 17 is a resolution approving survey services for North Main Street Flood Control Project Phase 1 and Lions Park Flood Control Project. Mr. Lang. Council previously approved uh, contracts with SEH for design services for these two projects and we have found in the past that we can get uh, better competitive bids by using local firms to do the actual surveying. So that is what I'm bringing forward to you today is um, a price from Jones, Hogan Smith out of Albert Lee to complete the necessary topo uh, survey work and data collection in the amount of $18,000 for these two projects. Council, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0. Your Honor. And for our final item of the evening, 18 is resolution approving approval of a memorandum of understanding with the International Association of Firefighters. Mr. Dankert. Uh, the pre at the previous uh, closed work session, council discussed the attached memo of understanding which clarifies how payout is made regarding sick leave and individuals that were hired before 2008 and the current collective bargaining agreement we are under. Uh, that memo of understanding outlines the payment to retiree Brian Lovick to be a lump sum of $5,000 and also would clarify the language in the IAFF contract such that the language is much more clear for future payouts of individuals that retire uh, from the city of Austin. Uh, it was a recommended approval at the closed work session. Council, any questions, comments? We need a uh, resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Jordahl. Aye. Bowton. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Council Member at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passed the 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. We now come to the reports and recommendation phase of our meeting. We'll start with Jeremy this evening. Uh, nothing, Your Honor. Nothing, Your Honor. Mike? Nothing, Your Honor. Janet? Nothing, Your Honor. Jeff? Well, I have a couple things, Your Honor. Uh, we did have a Park and Rec Board meeting on November 5th. Uh, at that, we met with a representative from the Vision 2020 Waterways Committee, and we discussed ways that we can work together on a variety of projects. Uh, we approved the request from the Chamber of Commerce for their uh, Christmas in the City event. Mm. Uh, and we also discussed the possibility of the Bruins uh, ad soliciting beer or liquor advertisement signs in Riverside Arena, and that is under further review. Uh, that's all from that. I also have, um, okay. uh, it's been almost a year since we ended our relationship with former city administrator Dr. Jim Herm. Mm. The council has now finished the process of finding a replacement. During this interim period, city operations continued to run fluidly and flawlessly. 
major projects such as the addition to the Hormel Institute, relocating the Spam Museum to downtown, and most recently the acquisition of the Oak Park Mall were successfully accomplished. I am of the opinion that more has been accomplished in the last 10 to 12 months than has been accomplished in several years with a city administrator in place. I am also of the opinion that these accomplishments are because of the fine, capable, and talented people that we have working for us. While I feel that every employee has stepped up their game, there are a few individuals that I would like to acknowledge tonight. Uh, former Community Development Director Craig Hoyam, Public Works Director Stephen Lang, City Clerk Ann Kazel, Park and Rec Director Kim Underwood, and former Public Works Director John Erickson. Thank you and all department heads and employees for once again raising the bar. In addition, there is one individual who I feel deserves special recognition. This individual has always gone above and beyond. He works long hours never expecting nor wanting anything in exchange. We, the council, ask this individual to take over the duties of city administrator in addition to his daily duties as finance and administration director during this interim period. Not only did Tom Dankert accept this challenge, he excelled at it. He was a driving force and key person in the major accomplishments I mentioned earlier. He was also equally impressive handling the day-to-day -day mundane business of the city. At this time, I would like to make a motion to recognize and reward Mr. Dankert for his tenure as interim city administrator. I move that the city council in recognition and reward for him filling in as interim city administrator award Mr. Tom Dankert a bonus in the amount of $1. <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. Because I have a feeling he would not accept anything more. <laughs> well, it's not an award. You've certainly earned that dollar, Mr. Dankert. <laughs> okay. Um, comments? Here, here. I, I, second. I uh, second the motion. But that was a motion. Okay. Was a motion, yes. Any more discussion? I just like to say I've talked to Mr. Dankert, and I, we have talked about uh, monetary re re remuneration, and he's he's consistently said no but I just can't even you know it's not just Mr. Danker that we're so lucky to have the staff we have but Mr. Danker really did step up I think we've seen a lot with Oak Park Mall with the Spam Museum uh, and, and our other staff too have, have done an excellent job but uh, particularly Tom I mean we're just so fortunate to have you okay well we have a motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. opposed can I give him that dollar an hour? Do we have to write a check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Do we have room for that in the budget, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Where's that dollar? Where's that dollar going to come from? Yeah, you'll have to see if you can find room. I was thinking more about buck seventy-five, but I guess if it's a buck, you don't want to go overboard. Um, Steve, do you have anything? No, no, Your Honor. Judy. I, I just wanted to say that I attended the dedication for the VFW monument that was done by the the Boy Scout that was here last time. Mm. It was cold and windy, but there was a great turnout. And yeah, so if you haven't had a chance, it's um, really a nice monument on the southwest corner of the VFW um, lot. And the young man and his troop did a wonderful job. He's just done a couple of different things now. He's really a, a plus for our community. He's going to really be something. Mr. Danker, do we have any reports? Mm -hmm. Okay, the only thing I'd like to say is I spent Thursday and Friday up in Minneapolis at the coalition meeting. I spent uh, two days with Mr. Clark, uh, who's going to be starting on the 8th, and I think uh, he's going to hit the ground running. He's going to have meetings with different council members and different staff, and he'll be ready to go. This is our last meeting that he won't be attending, I believe. He'll be here. Won't be for the first December one. He's not here till the 8th. December 8th. Okay, we got the first meeting in December. But uh, I think I think we're we're fortunate to have him. I think he uh, he's going to really he's going to get us. He's going to be good. So with that, well, we need a motion to adjourn till Monday, December 1st, 2014 at 5.30 p.m. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we'll take a five to ten minute break and meet in the small conference room across the hallway.